Good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, Rufino, good evening. Well, okay, guys, hello, good evening to every one of you. It's really nice to see you once again. Welcome to the class. Uh, well, I usually, guys, ask you questions regarding to the last class, but since yesterday's class, it was just vocabulary, vocabulary that you already know. So today I'm not going to ask you questions regarding to that because I consider that the majority of you already knew about that vocabulary. So um, today's class, guys, is going to be really important because today we are going to see uh, a grammatical topic that probably some of you already know, but it's important to know some rules. Today's class is going to be about present continuous. Okay, so it's going to be about present continuous. Today, we are going to learn rules, grammatical rules, obviously, and the way that you should work using uh, present continuous. Because we could probably think that all verbs can be used in present continuous, but let me tell you that not all verbs can be used in present continuous. So today we're going to understand that. Okay, so um, let me just share the presentation with you so we can start. Let's just let me see. Just give me a moment. Okay. Okay, just let me share. All right, can everyone see the the presentation? Can you see it? Yes, the yes. chair. All right. So guys, today is our 12th class. It means that we just have three more classes because the last one it's going to be, I'd say, your final day. And uh, well, actually, we just have three more classes because the last one that is going to be on next Thursday is going to be um, kind of evaluation or something like that. So please be ready for that day. So uh, as you can see today's guys, we're going to see a little bit about pressing continuous. I'm pretty sure that my, the majority of you probably already know um, how to use it because uh, it's not that complicated actually, but it has some grammatical rules that you need to understand so you don't make mistakes when it comes to speak in English, okay? So first of all, we're going to try to know 
about the use of uh, press and continuous. Um, I will need a volunteer or someone that would like to help me reading that part, please. I volunteer. Okay, go ahead. Use. We use the present continuous to talk about actions happening now, mm -hmm. at the moment. Excellent, thank you very much. So we have one example right there, it's just one general example. As it says, we use it to talk about things, action that are happening in the moment, actions that you are doing. For example, we can say, Alice is riding her bike. We have a between parentheses at the moment because it's something that she is doing right now. So it's, um, it's very simple to understand present actions or things that we are doing at the moment. So that's just the beginning. Just let me see. Oh my God. Okay. Let's continue. And here we have also a formula that you could use to make positive sentences using the present continuous. For example, if you want to make a positive sentence, you are going to use, first of all, the subject plus the verb be in present simple or simple present plus the main verb and the main verb needs to have the ing form. And obviously at the end, we can just add a complement. We have one example right there that it says, Mark and his brother are playing football. What is the subject in that sentence, guys? Mark and his brother. Marking his brother, Mark. that is the subject, yes. And then we have the verb be, obviously in present, plus the main verb, that is the verb play, plus the ing, and obviously football is just a complement. Okay, so that's the formula that you need to follow or that you need to use in order to form positive sentences with the simple present. So let's move on. What happened with the negative, guys? We have a little chart over here. And in this chart, we can see the long answers and also the contractions. So I can say I am or I'm. I am or I'm reading. You are your reading. He is his cooking. She is she's cooking. It is it's dancing. We are we're reading. You are your singing. They are their cooking. Yes. So we can use both of them. You can use whether a contraction or you can say I am, that's up to you, okay? So what happened with the negatives? We can also make contractions or use the contractions. Um, we can say I am not or I am not reading. You are not or you aren't reading. He is not or he isn't cooking. She is not or she isn't cooking. We are not, we aren't dancing. They are not, they aren't singing. Okay, so let me hear some one of you. Can I have a volunteer? Adriana, okay, Adriana. Help me or please try to make the affirmative form, both ways, using I am and also the contractions, please. Okay. Um, also negative or? No, just affirmatives. Only affirmative. Mm -hmm. I am reading. I'm reading. Excellent. Uh, All of them, please. Okay. Uh, you are cooking. You're cooking. Mm -hmm. He is dancing. He is dancing. Mm -hmm. She is singing. She is singing. 
It is reading. It is it's reading. Mm -hmm. um, we are cooking. We're cooking. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You are, um, you are dancing. You're dancing. Mm -hmm. They are singing and they're singing. Thank you very much, Adriana. Really nice pronunciation. Let me see, can I have another volunteer that would like to help me with the negatives? Estela. Estela, go ahead, please, Estela. I am not reading. Mm -hmm. I'm not reading. Mm -hmm. You are not re reading. You, you aren't. You, you aren't. You aren't. You aren't reading. Mm -hmm. He aren't. He aren't not cooking. I'm sorry. Say that again. He are. He no, are. He is. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Sorry. He is not reading. He isn't cooking. Mm -hmm. He is. She is not. Say that again. She. Say it again. She. Sí. Not. Okay, okay, cool, go ahead. Como cuando vamos a arriba la calle, o algo así. Yeah, yeah, that's the sound she I want. She is not uh -huh. reading. She is not cooking. She is not dancing. She is not singing. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, we are not. Reading, mm -hmm. you are not reading. We aren't. Remember the contraction. Uh, we aren't. Sorry. <laughs> reading, you are not reading. Mm -hmm. you, you aren't. Aren't. Reading, aren't. Pardon. You aren't. Aren't. Cooking, you aren't. Dancing, you aren't. Sing, singer, 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 singing, singer. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, it's very important, guys, that you know how to make the pronunciation of the contractions. Remember, when you say aren't, you have to make the, the last T sound. That T sound, it needs to be clear. You aren't reading. So we understand that you're talking negative. So uh, we can also, guys, make questions or interrogatives with uh, the present continuous. It's not actually that difficult because what we normally do for a simple question, we only move the verb the verb be at the at the beginning, then the subject or pronoun. And then the main verb in ing. When you use these type of questions, guys, when you use these type of questions, we are going to call these type of questions yes or no questions, okay? Because if I ask you, for example, uh, Maria Luz de Nieto, if I ask you, are you eating? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, what? <laughs> um, yes, I am. Yes, she is. No, because I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Um, so yeah. if I if I'm asking you. Are you eating? And you said yes, you would say yes, I am. Using the verb be. Okay. Yes, I am. I am. Okay, very good. So as you can see, the only thing that we do with yes or no question is that we move the verb be at the beginning, verb uh 
subject or pronoun and verb. That's it. So, am I painting? Are you painting? Is she swimming? Is he walking? Are we painting? Are they eating? So, all of them, since we have the verb at the beginning, is going to be yes or no. Question, how are going to be the short answers or the yes or no answers? We can say, yes, I am. Yes, you are. Yes, he is. Yes, she is. Yes, it is. Yes, we are. Yes, you are. Yes, they are. Okay? Th those are going to be the short answers. I can, you can also say, no, I'm not, or no, I am not. No, you are not, or no, you aren't. No, he is, or no, she is not. No, it is not, or no, it isn't. So it's very important to understand that. Now, I have one question for you all. Can I use a WH question to make, obviously, a question in present continuous? Can I use the WH questions? If you say yes, please give me an example. Yes. Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Your example? My example is, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's the most famous one. Uh huh. Okay, but that's good. If uh, if you ask that question, or if you ask me that question, can I say yes or no? Sorry, I don't understand. If you, uh, if, you if you ask me that question, the question that you said, what are you doing? If you ask me, or if you ask someone else. Can that person say or answer that question with a yes or no? Is that possible? No, porque tienen que responder con do. With what? Porque si pregunto con do, la persona me tiene que responder con, con do o con das. Tiene que dar una respuesta larga. Okay, so if someone asks me the question like um like the question you you ask, like what are you doing? Where where are you going? Where are you going? where are where yeah. are you going? Where are you going? If you ask me that question, I could say, I am going to the supermarket. Excellent, like that, like that. So always remember guys, if you use a WH question at the beginning, you gotta remember that you cannot, never answer those questions with a yes or no. Your answer should always be long answer. Okay, I think that at this point we are clear on that, aren't we? We are clear, right? Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, clear. Yes, teacher. Very good. So here we comes with the rules. How do we make the um, continuous of the verbs? Here we're going to find that out. We have the rules for the verbs and the basic rule says, we add, we just add ing to the base form of the verb. Example, work, working, play, playing, assist, assisting, see, seen, be, been. La regla básica dice que le, podemos, le agregamos ing a todos los verbos. But, más adelante vamos a ver que si estos dos verbos, B and C, pueden ser utilizados o no pueden ser utilizados en presente continuo. This is just the general rule. We're going to find out later on. Okay? So, but, we also have exceptions. It says, 
that if you have a verb that follows the following pattern, si tenemos un verbo con el siguiente patrón, pattern, consonant, vowel, consonant, what are we going to do? We are going to double the last letter and then we are going to add ing. Example, stop, stopping, run, running, begin, beginning. But remember that that is going to happen only when we have the vowel or the sound of the vowel is stressed because we have the verb open. And in that verb, it is not available to use the um, rule that we just saw. Con el verbo open, no podemos utilizarlo, aunque las últimas tres letras sí siguen el patrón. Pero ¿por qué no lo podemos usar? Simple, porque el estrés... Cuando lo pronunciamos, no se le da en la letra E, sino que se la da en la O. Decimos open. Open. So, that's why we cannot make, no le podemos double the last letter. ¿Sí? Solo le agregamos ING. That's, those are the exceptions that we have. ¿Ok? So, Another two exceptions that we have, guys, is that if the verb ends in IE, we are going to uh, change the letter IE for a letter Y, and we are going to add ING. We have the verb lie, lie in, die, die in. Are we clear? Yes, teacher. Okay, so another exception, guys, is that if we have, normally if we have a, a vowel consonant plus E, normally the verbs that finishes in the letter E, we uh, move or we erase, borramos o movemos o omitimos the letter E, and we just add the ing. We say come, coming. Mistake, mistaking. Okay? Those are the exception or rules that we have when it comes to make or to use the continuous in the verbs. Is there any questions so far or so far so good? Teacher, mm -hmm. what the meaning of stress vowel in Spanish? Vowel, this word? Stress vowel. Stress, Stress vowel. vowel. Es una vocal estresada o el estrés que hacemos al hablar. For example, si tú dices stop, el sonido más fuerte lo hacemos en la letra O. Stop. Si tú dices run en la letra U. Begin. 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 So, por eso le llamamos stress vowel, porque la fuerza la ponemos en la vocal. Como el acento. Okay. Es la entonación en el acento. Uh -huh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what it means. So, a very important part, guys. Here we, here we go. Aquí vamos. Which are the verbs? ¿Cuáles son los verbos que yo puedo usar en continuo y cuáles son los que no? Aquí tenemos una lista de todos los que no pueden usar en continuo. And we are going to understand and we are going to see why. Can someone help me reading this part, all this part? Jenny. <laughs> Jenny Sanchez. Hello. Permítame, ¿me escucha? Yes. Ok, es que perdí la pantalla. Ok. Non-continuous verbs are verbs that we do normally use 
with continuous continuous tense. Mm -hmm. This is is state stative. Mm -hmm. Stative. Ver mm -hmm. uh, verbs are about state, not action, and they cannot express the continuous or progr or progressive aspect. Mm -hmm. Here are some of the most common non-continuous verbs. Okay. Feeling. Okay. Okay, just leave it there. Thank you very much. So, what does it mean, guys? ¿Qué significa? Que estos verbos no los podemos usar en continuo porque son verbos estáticos o verbos de sentimientos o verbos de sentido, verbos de comunicación o verbos de pensamiento. See? That's the reason why we cannot use them in continuous. Si los usamos en continuos, su significado cambia. We will see some examples later on. For example, los verbos de sentimiento such as hate, like, love, prefer, want, and wish. We have the verb of the sense, los verbos de los sentidos, appear, feel, hear, see, seem, smell, sound, taste. We also have the verbs of communication, agree, deny, I'm sorry, deny, disagree, mean, promise, satisfy, surprise. We also have the verbs of thinking, believe, Imagine, know, mean, realize, recognize, remember, and understand. Other verbs, the verb be, belong, concern, depend, involve, matter, need, owe. Yes, please. Um, can you please turn your microphones off? The microphones. The microphone, chicos, please. Hello. Please, chicos, los micrófonos, apaguémoslo, por favor. Puede repetir los verbos, por favor, porque no los escuché la pronunciación. All of them? Todos. Sí, teacher, sí. Okay, so let's go, uh, let's go again. Hate, like, love, prefer, want, wish, appear, feel, hear, see, seem, smell, sound, taste, agree, deny, disagree, mean, promise, Satisfy, surprise. Believe, imagine, know, mean, realize, recognize, remember, understand. Be, belong, concern, depend, involve, matter, need, owe, own, possess. Okay, do you guys know the meaning of all the verbs that we have there? In the last one, uh, oh, oh, this one, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, is the ver. The difference is the oh in oh, please, teacher. This one what is, is this one is uh, own and possess. Los dos significan poseer, ¿sí? Own, okay. they are yes. synonyms. Mm -hmm. Poseer, own and possess. All right, so. What does it mean, sim, coach? Sim, sim, sim. Uh -huh. this one, parecer. Okay, thank you. If you say, si tú quieres decir parece que en... Parece raro. It seems weird. Parece raro. Uh -huh. Excuse me, teacher. Uh -huh. 
in the other state? Verb B. Other state, yeah. Well, what happened with that? In the, in the previously is a chart or mm -hmm. a screen, mm -hmm. that, verb, that verb was uh, in continuo. In, yeah, in continuous, yes. Yes. Es por eso que le dije, estos dos verbos, más adelante los vamos a ver y vamos a entender el por qué están aquí en continuo, cuándo usarlos y cuándo no. Because if you use them, that can change the whole thing. Puede cambiar drásticamente toda la oración. So we are going to find that out, see? ¿sí? Ya vamos a llegar ahí. But thank you so much for noticing that. All right. So here we have some examples. Aquí tenemos unos ejemplos de cómo usar lo correcto y cuando no está correcto. So we have here, I want coffee. Quiero café. Usted no va a decir, I am wanting coffee. Estoy queriendo café. Obviously, evidentemente, si usted lo quiere traducir en español, usted lo va a entender perfectamente. Porque en español, nosotros, esa es nuestra forma de hablar. Si usted, hay veces le decimos, ya viste el audio que te mandé. Nuestro español es así. Y decimos cosas que no tienen sentido. So we speak in that way. Okay, so, but in English, it's not like that. In English, it's a completely different story. So we have to learn how to use them so we, don't, we do not make mistakes. So we have the verb believe here that as you remember, verb believe because it's a verb of thinking, we cannot use them in the, uh, in the continuous form. So you have to use it in the simple present. So instead of saying, I'm not believing you are right, si usted traduce esto, no estoy, no estoy creyendo que estés en lo correcto. Vuelvo y le repito, para nosotros en español, esto estaría perfecto si alguien nos dice así. No estoy creyendo que estés en lo correcto. ¿Por qué? Porque así hablamos nosotros español. But in English, we cannot say that. So we are going to use simple present. Y vamos a decir, I don't believe you are right. Okay? So what happened with the verb belong? What does the verb belong means? What does it mean? Pertenecer. Pertenecer. Does this, belong, does this pen belong to you? No podemos decir, is this pen belonging to you? Porque si usted utiliza belonging, a partir de ese momento en inglés, ya no es per, el verbo pertenecer, sino que belonging son pertenencias. ¿Sí? That's why you gotta be careful with that. Because as you can see, if you use it in the, um, in the continuous form, the meaning of the sentence will change drastically, okay? So we gotta be careful. So it seemed wrong. It seemed wrong. What do you understand by this sentence? What do you guys understand? Parece erróneo. Parece erróneo. Mm -hmm. Parece o parecilla? Parecilla. Parecilla. Why? Because it is in the past. It seemed wrong. So you cannot say it was seem wrong because it won't make sense at all. So the next one, the verb here. I don't hear anything. So you cannot say, I'm not hearing anything. No estoy escuchando nada. Vuelvo y le repito, si usted lo traduce literalmente, de inglés a español, usted puede decir, no estoy escuchándote nada, pero si eso está correcto. But that's in Spanish. So that's why, no sé si alguna vez les han dicho, no pensemos en español while you're speaking in English. I know that right now, probably, a este momento probablemente siempre traduzcan en su mente antes de hablar. 
but that's part of the process. It's part of the process. So later on, probably your mind will think automatically in English. You see? Luego de eso, su mente se acostumbra, ya sale, fluye todo en inglés sin estar traduciendo en su mente. All right. So, uh, any questions so far, guys, with this explanation? No questions. No, no teacher, no question. All right. So, um, when we have the verb see and the verb hear, we can use, para no, no utilizarlos en um, continuous, we can use can. ¿Qué es can, guys? What's that? Poder. Poder, but Poder. gramaticalmente hablando, ¿qué es? Ya vimos model verbs. Tema. Model mm -hmm. verb. Excellent. That's a model verb, can. So we can use the model verb can so we don't make mistakes. Because if you say, I can see someone in the distance, en lugar de decir, I'm seeing someone in the distance, estoy viendo a alguien en la distancia. Esa sería la traducción literal si usted utiliza el verbo sí, con ing. Pero si usted lo utiliza de esa manera, ya no significa ver, sino que se, está, se le da otro significado que vamos a aprender más adelante. All right. So in order for you to avoid those mistakes, you can use model verbs so you don't make those mistakes. Are we clear? Some of you. Okay. So guys, microphones. Okay, thank you. All right. So here we have. Aquí vamos a ver por qué eh, la pregunta de Luis. Por qué aquí tenemos el verb be. Y aquí vamos a ver cuándo lo cambiamos o cuándo lo utilizamos en continuous. And how does that changes? Or why does it change the meaning? So we can see someone that would like to help me reading this part. Rodrigo, chicas, go ahead. Some things, wherever we can use main verb be with a continuous tense. This is when the real sense of be is act or behalf. Also, okay. mm -hmm. behave. Also, the action is temporary. Compare the examples in the table below. Okay. So as you can see, guys, it says that it says that sometimes in however all the things that we already know, we can use the present continuous using the verb be, but if we use in, uh, the verb be in present continuous, it's because we are referring to an act or a behave. So, and also the action, it's only temporary, okay? So let's see some examples. Can I have a volunteer for this example, number one? Me teacher. Okay, go ahead. Me, okay, Mary is a careful person. Mm -hmm. Mary is always careful. It's her na nature. It's her nature. So when you nature. said, yeah, when you said Mary is, care is a careful person, estamos diciendo que María es una persona cuidadosa. Por eso entre paréntesis dice que ella siempre es cuidadosa, es su naturaleza. Ahora, ¿qué pasa si yo utilizo el verbo be con ing haciendo referencia a la misma situación? Let's go to this part. Let me see. Rufino, help me reading this part, please. John is being careful. John is 18. Carefully now, but maybe he's not always careful. We don't know. Okay, so tenemos la misma cosa, careful. Si se fijan acá, utilizamos el verb be en simple present. Y aquí lo estamos utilizando en continuous. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Simple. Here we have it in between parentheses. 
Cuando lo utilizamos en simple present, estamos diciendo que esta persona es cuidadosa siempre. Cuando lo utilizamos is being careful, es porque estamos diciendo que la persona está siendo cuidadosa solo en ese momento, mas no significa que la persona sea así siempre. No se sabe. Are we, are we kind of understanding or are you guys understanding? Yes, teacher, we understand. Okay, very good. So Tatiana Pleites, help me reading um, number two, please. Is he always so stupid? Mm -hmm. Is that his personality? So we're asking if, is he always so stupid? Is that his personality? So let's see. Let's go to this example, number two. Uh, let me see. Stephanie Figueroa. Here. Um, the example, num example number two. No, this one right Ah, here. number two, okay. Mm -hmm. They were be being really stupid. They were behaving really stupid, stupid at that moment. Okay, so right now we are using the same verb be to refer to the same action, but as you can see, when you use it in the simple present and when you use it in the continuous, it completely changes the, um, the meaning. Because if, if you use, in this case, the verb be in the present continuous, referring to the same thing, that they were being really stupid, is because you're trying to say that their behavior, su comportamiento at that moment, it was really stupidly at the moment. So um, that's, that's really, or that's the meaning that we're giving to, to the verb be when we are referring to the same thing, all right? So let's go to example number three. Let me see Andrea Renderos. Okay, um, number three. Mm -hmm. Andrew is not usually selfish. It is not Andrew character to be selfish mm -hmm. all right it, so let me see jenny sanchez help me with this this one here why is he being so selfish mm -hmm. why is he being so selfish why is he acting so selfishly at mm -hmm. the moment all right so i think that with these three examples you have kind of clear when, when uh, if you use in the simple present or if you use in the continuous, the meaning of both is going to change dramatically. So it's going to be different because you're going to be referring to do different things or to uh, different actions at that moment, okay? Is it clear, guys? Yes, teacher, and um, what the meaning selfish? Selfish, egoista. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So and now we're going to see the difference of the verb C, del verbo. What does C mean? The verb C. What does C mean? Viendo. Viendo. Well, the verb C means ver. Uh -huh. Ok. So, aquí vamos a ver dos diferencias y cómo cambia drásticamente el, el significado if you use the verb C in present continuous. Si usted utiliza el, el verbo C in present continuous, for example, like in this example, I'm seeing Harry at 10 o'clock tomorrow. What shall, what shall I tell him? <coughs> I'm sorry. In this case, el verbo ver deja de, de, de ser verbo ver. Cualquiera pensaría que como sea en, en ING sería viendo. ¿Sí? Yo estoy viendo. But 
en inglés deja de ser o de referirse a la acción de ver y pasa a ser una cita. Si es como que yo tuviera una cita médica o una cita con alguien. En este caso diría, I'm seeing Harry. Uh, tengo una cita con Harry a las 10 en punto mañana. ¿Sí? Si se fijan, nada que ver con el significado del verbo original. Do we understand that part? Yes, In this moment, yes. Tomorrow, oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> remember. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. That's a fact. Sure. Pasa. Yes, go ahead. Uh, we can use also the that that verb like a uh, appointment. That like, is the yeah. same like seeing. Yeah, seen. If you're talking about an appointment, you can use the verb seen because if uh ya no va a significar ver, ver sino que eh, eh, se refiere a una cita, sí, a una cita de eh, con alguien. Una cita médica o something like that. Mm -hmm. So, también puede usarse, si lo utilizamos en um, continuos, si lo utilizamos en eso, también puede significar que usted está conociendo a alguien en un sentido romántico, como una cita romántica. For example, we have, I asked her to go out on a day with me But she told me she was already seeing someone. Le pregunté que saliera o le dije que saliera conmigo o que saliéramos en una cita conmigo, pero me dijo que ya estaba viendo a alguien. En este caso, cuando yo digo viendo, no me refiero a la acción literal de ver, sino a la um, al sentido de estar se viendo en un sentido romántico con alguien. Yes, are we are we clear on that part? Estamos claros yes. ahí? Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay. So, now let me ask you questions. Vamos a ver si es cierto que entendimos. Now it's time for me to check if you really understood. Let me see, just let me check. All right. If I have, guys, the verb get, G-E-T, get, can I make it in the, or can I put it in the continuous form? Si puedo, please uh, type it on the chat, please. Right now, the verb get, G-E-T, get. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Claudia, Alejandra, Norma, Carlos. Okay, Lisette, excellent. Cecilia, Tatiana Pleites, Rufino. Very good. Jenny Sanchez. Mm -hmm. Luis Enrique, Maria Luz, Patricia. Rodrigo, Catherine Villeda, Stephanie Figueroa, Estrella Lara, ok. ¿Qué pasaría si yo les digo que todos están incorrectos? ¿Qué pasaría si todos estuvieran en lo incorrecto? Según en los ejemplos que aparecen en la slide anterior, no aparece ese verbo. La... No, no aparecía ese verbo, sí, exacto, no aparecía, pero como ya vimos las reglas, déjenme decirle que todos están en lo correcto, ¿sí? Nunca dudemos, chicos, de lo que ya sabemos, ya vimos las reglas, and we know the rules, una vez sepa las reglas, vámonos, excellent, ok, thank you very much. So, we are going to go to the real practice right now, guys, so... Please, this is going to be today's practice. Please, you already know what to do. Take a screenshot or 
whatever you're going to do, a picture or something like that, so we can start working on that, okay? So, okay, very good. All right, so you let me know so I can move on. Yes, move. Here we have. Can I? Yes, teacher. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. That's all that we have for today. So we're going to go to the breakout rooms, guys, just to work on that part. And that's going to be pretty much it for today. So just let me, okay, where is this? Okay, cool. I hope it is clear, guys. I hope it's clear and you don't forget the rules. Because that's very important. So please go ahead and join your groups. This meeting is Very being nice, recorded. nice, nice, and in, in, in the in the stair. And uh, yeah, we we start beginning. Yeah, yeah. We, beginning. We can we can begin on this. Uh, and a half for in the. In beginning, solo agregamos la e. Begin. Sí. Are you sure? Other? Sure. Moving. Moving. Eh, le, le ponemos otra vez y uh, Angie. And Ru. And Ru. Moving. Le agregamos otra vez y ponemos uh, el Angie. Y en eje. Y en... Is studying. Robin. Robin. Listening. Listening. Lying. Lying. Okay. Swimming. Happening, getting, swim, swimming, um, um, uh, I don't know. Okay, admitting. Um, 
trying. Try, um, trying. Uh huh. Try, trying. Um, decide. Mm -hmm. Deciding. Eliminator E. Uh huh. E. And add I and G. Uh huh. Come. Deciding. Come, coming. Coming, yes. Coming, okay. E put. Putting. Uh -huh. Put. Okay. Uh, the next, please. Admit. No, it's not. Admitting, uh -huh, sí, ¿verdad? Yeah. <clears throat> Three, three, sí. Try, try, trying. Uh -huh. Trying. Decide. Decide. <clears throat> Decide. Deciding. Ajá, quitamos la E. Come, coming. Coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quitándole la E. Coming. Uh -huh. Y putting es poniendo doble T y N G. Doble T. Putting. Ok. Okay. Next. Next. The former. Pero aquí dice que usando el going to. Sí. De los de los verbos que aparecen arriba. Sí. Ahí está, no la veo bien. No la tomé bien. La... Farmer. Entonces, the farmer going to... Yes. In the to take, drawing, drawing, taking, driving test with his friends. And as now is in the four. Snowing. No, is no. it is snowing. It's snowing. Okay. Test me. They are hoping to pass in no, this time. No, John, John is going to take <laughs> driving test. que tenga cuidado el agua ah. va a estar como congelado húmeda mojado Humed. el for everyone is excited it it's 
going to jump, jump. No. Ya regreso. <laughs> You finished already? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Ya estábamos preocupados que no lo veíamos. <laughs> yeah, we're checking another group. <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, the first part was kind of easy, guys, because uh, obviously was just adding ing and obviously following the rules. And. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Yo no he participado porque estoy en donde hay un montón de bulla y si abro el micrófono se oye toda la bulla. It, it's okay. It's okay. As long as you pay attention in the class, that's okay. All right. So let me ask you some questions, guys, in general. For the verb listening, according to the rules that we saw, do we double the letter L? double another in or we just add ing what do you guys think i think it's rub is what rub no the verb listen i mean no qué I pasa con el verbo listening. listen chicos le, agre le, de le doblamos yes, la última n yes yes, yes. ponemos dos oh, letras okay. Dos letras en. No. No. Why, no, Why not? Yes. It's in list. The Excellent. Is in list. The stress is in list. Excellent. The stress in list. Yeah. So the stress, we make it on list. We don't, we don't double. No doblamos la última N, sino que lo dejamos. Listening. We just add ING. What about the verb happen? Agregamos and yeah. and yeah. ing. Le agregamos, le agregamos otra n? No. Ing. No solo el happen. So in that case, we do not tampoco le agregamos otra n. Solo le agregamos ing. Mm -hmm. Yes, ing. Why? Because also the stress is in ha happened. See? So that's why we do not double. All right. What about the verb put? Yes. Uh, Double T. Double T. We double the letter T and we say putting. Okay. So. Let me see with this part, guys. Uh, Rufino, you're going to have number one. Stella, number two. Jacqueline, number three. Rodrigo, number four. And the last one, Patricia Veronica. So go ahead. The farmer, the farmer is going to plow his field to prepare for the next planting season. Excellent. The farmer is going to plow his fell to prepare for the next season. Thank you very much. Number two. Mm -hmm. John is going to take. I'm sorry, what? Tenemos que agregarle ING? No. Porque solo era going to. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So let's go. Number two. John is mm -hmm. going to take driving test with his friends. They are hoping to pass it this time. Thank you. It says John is going to take driving tests with his friends. They're hoping to pass it this time. Thank you very much. Number three. Okay. Be careful. Well, the weather is going to spill on the floor. Somebody mm -hmm. might be injured because of the wet floor. Excellent. Thank you very much. Number four. Everyone is excited. Is it is going to snow in tomorrow? 
Thank you. Everyone is excited. It's going to snow in tomorrow. Thank you very much. And the last one. The monkey is going to jump from one tree to the others. Okay. Um, in that case, because we're talking about Pluto, we use are. The monkeys are going to jump from one tree to the other, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. So guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today. I will, I don't know if you would like me to send you the presentation so I can share it with you after the class. Yes, yes or no? Yes. 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 All right, so I will send it to you Andy. after the class and uh, that's gonna be all for today. See you next Monday. Hope you have a good weekend and be safe, okay? Have a good weekend, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.